Joining me now is Governor Rick Snyder. Governor Snyder, it's great to see you. It's great to be here. Um, go ahead and tell me um, what this year has been like for you so far. Has this been a different experience for you up on Mackinac this year? Yeah, well, it's been a challenging year. Everyone knows that. And what I would say is it's good to be here at Mackinac because over the last few years, the conference focus has really been on not just talking about problems, but talking about solutions. And so that's one of the messages I really want to reinforce with people is, is we've had these challenges, Flint in particular, Detroit education, but we're putting solutions in place and this is a good place to have people get more engaged, more involved, and look at Michigan's bright future. Something you said yesterday, though, that stuck out, you said the reports of my demise have been well overblown. Why did you feel the need to say that? Well, again, it was actually uh, going to some media interviews I'd done earlier in the day. And when I was talking to the, the press people, um, their attitude was they were very depressed um, in how they were talking about things. And it was like, it's important to recognize we have serious problems and issues. Um, and they said, well, how are you going to solve this? Is there any way this can be addressed? And it's like, well, yeah, we're already addressing them. You know, these were things you wish they would never happen. In the Flint's case, Detroit's been there for years, but we're taking on those tough problems and putting solutions in place. And let's be positive and constructive to say, Wish they never happened, but let's do the best we can to have good outcomes. All right, so let's talk about some of those problems yeah. right now. Let's talk about Flint. Where are we in terms of you're looking at water testing? We still have a city that cannot drink their water unless it's filtered or unless it's coming from a bottle. That still is the case. Um, we're doing another round of testing now, and that was part of doing the flushing program. So we've had a flushing program asking residents to run their water for five minutes between their bathtub and their faucets because that will help recoat the pipes faster. And so that has been during this last month. Now we hope to do another round of testing to see the improvements that should be taking place. And at the same time, we're making progress. The city has been continuing to move forward with their lead pipe replacement program. I think the toughest thing, though, for people is the trust. How do you yeah. work on getting that trust back from people? And there was a new poll out that said 70% 70 of people in Flint still don't trust that when the city says it's okay to drink filtered water, how do you start to rebuild that trust? Well, again, this is where you try to have good role models do it. And we had the, the best person in the country to do it. Literally, the president, when he came to town, was drinking filtered water from Flint. So that's the kind of message we need to reinforce to show that um, people are willing to actually participate, drink the water, show it's safe, and bring in outside experts. Again, Professor Mark Edwards has been very helpful in terms of his water test results. Okay, I want to talk about business in the state of Michigan, but before I get there, I want to talk about DPS. Yeah. Up here at Mackinac, this is what's happening, is the last-minute negotiations. Where are we right now in terms of keeping some kind of Detroit Education Commission in as a plan for DPS going forward, and how much money are we still talking about in startup costs? Yeah, well, let me start at a place other than the Detroit Education Commission, because that's a relatively new concept. That's something I'm a supporter of, too. I help promote it and bring it up. But areas that there is agreement on, it appears, in terms of this, is paying back $500 million of historic debt. That's huge. Doing an elected school board as fast as practicable. That's a huge um, step forward. There's widespread agreement on a significant amount of investment dollars. They're still differing you know, probably in about a $50 million range, but it could be 150 to $200 million. And then the DEC has been probably the most contentious issue, the most difficult issue. But if you go back a couple years and ask anyone in Detroit what were the key issues, it would have been saying, let's address the debt and the school board. Um, and these issues are seriously on the table for resolution. I think we need to continue the discussion on the newer items, such as the DEC, because again, I believe in it and an advocate for it. But let's not forget the big picture. Okay, um, let's talk about Michigan wants to be a top 10 state in terms of attracting business and, and growing business here. The business climate is much better than it has been in years yeah. past, looking at unemployment numbers as well. Where do we need to go from here? Well, we need to continue the path we're on because we're seeing great outcomes. One illustration I'll give you that most people don't have an opportunity to look into the numbers in great depth is our unemployment rate has been 4.8% for two or three months now. And it hasn't continued to go down. It's still below the national average, but one of the reasons it hasn't gone down is we've had 104,000 people enter the labor force since the first of the year. Um, and that's huge. That means people that sort of might have not believe they could find work or have an opportunity are now believing there's work in Michigan. And so those people are going to work. 
Um, and if you think about 104,000 more people having opportunities to have careers, that's the equivalent of a Flint, a Lansing, an Ann Arbor size of community. That's big. Uh, you're talking a lot about the future of mobility mm -hmm. and how the state of Michigan should be playing a big role in that. Yeah, we defined it that way. We actually named it Planet M. So no one can accuse us of thinking small. <laughs> But it's tremendously exciting. We've been the world leader in the automotive industry since its creation, largely. It's transforming to the mobility industry. Let's make sure we're at the forefront of leading the mobility industry, and it involves both physical facilities, M-City at the U of M, what we're talking about for the American Center for Mobility at Willow Run, but also the thought processes to say, how do we address the regulatory issues, the insurance issues, the human questions about having more intelligent vehicles and how beneficial that can be. All right, Governor Snyder, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it. It's great to be with you. All right, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Okay.